Hi, I'm Robert from Pathway Connectivity Solutions, and I'm here to tell you about our very exciting release of Passcape Config version 5. We've changed the name to better describe exactly what it does for you. And I'm going to spend a lot of time on the new feature called Network Navigator. It's a whole new way of looking at your network in real time. But stick around at the end. I will also talk about some of the other enhancements we have made to IGMP, Internet Group Management, protocol and how that works with our via switches and also a new feature for the e-link which allows you to convert any protocol like SACN or Artnet to Kinet unicast or multicast. That's pretty exciting stuff if you've ever used any of the color kinetics uh, power devices. So stick around for that. But first off, let's dive right in. I've loaded up a big show file here now we have the network navigator tab and this is a graphical representation of what uh, your rig looks like in real time with connections to the via switches and how they are connected to our other devices so uh, you can see i've already done a bit of work laying this out when you load up show files it just drops things into empty space and then you can move them around and then add a background image and i'll show you some of those tools now now i'm working on a mac and i've got an intelli mouse here so i can actually just pan and uh, move around just by using my mouse and if i hold down the control key i can zoom in and out by going like this uh, it's a really fast way of getting around but I want to show some other tools. So again, to zoom in and out, you just hold down the control key uh, or the command key. Uh, if you're on Windows, it's the control key. Uh, and if you look at the menu options up here, we obviously have some toolbars that help you. If I just press zoom in or zoom out, and when you hover over there, you can see there's a hot key. So Page up and page down can help you zoom in and out if you don't want to, if you don't have a wheel mouse or an Intelli mouse and hold down control, you can just page up and page down to zoom in and out. And then you can zoom into a window. So this uh, is the tool here and I can zoom into this area here. And then if I wanted to go back, I could zoom to the previous view. And the hotkeys for that is S for a selection window, go like this and P to go back to the previous window. We also have hotkeys for zooming to the extents. So that is the N key. So if I zoomed right in tight to something, to zoom right in there, I want to go right back out to the full view. I hit the N key and I zoom out. Now, if I just touch a single device and I hit the home key, that will center me right in on that. So this is fun too when you change tabs. If I grab another device and then I go in here to the navigator tab, it actually centers me on that device. So here I'll come back out and I'll select a console uh, main via. And then when I go to the navigator tab, it's already centered on that. I want to talk about selection. Uh, so let's just go to these four path ports here. Uh, if I select from left to right, it will select everything it encompasses. So if you look closely here, I've just selected the four ports of this rack mount four port. But if I keep going, it will select the whole device. If I just select two ports, I can see the properties of the two ports here and change some of their properties, uh, just like you would if you were back in the device view and it's already selected the two ports that I was looking at and expanded out the four port rack mount, which is great. And then when I come in here, oh, and then I can select these two ports and change their properties. That was moving from left to right. Uh, one of the other great tools is sometimes you can't see everything on the screen but you can see parts of it so if you go from right to left anything that crosses the window it will select so rather than me having to stretch up here and bring in everything if i just go this way anything i touch it will select and then i get the devices here 
one, two, three, four, five. There's five devices here. That's the window selection from left to right, right to left. And you select devices in the navigator view. It will select those devices in the device view. So I've got the four port and the one port, as you can see, the four port and the one port. So the reverse is true as well. I could use the filter here and let's say we're just going to filter on stage right. See, I have stage left, stage right. I'm going to now just filter on stage right. And when I go in here and I use control A to select all and I go to the navigator tab, it's just showing me all of these one ports that are on the stage right side of my stage. So now what I want to show is uh, a really quick way of uh, aligning and distributing these devices. So let's take this guy here uh, and then we will take these guys. Move this down here, move that one up there and that's going on the seventh electric and this is going on the first electric. So I'll move that down here. I will grab all of these and now you can see up here I have ability to align these devices to the left and then I can also distribute them vertically like that and then move them on mass and line them up to their pipes. And when you're happy with everything what you can do is then lock the placement. So now as you select devices you don't accidentally move them about. You can see here port 12 is connected to port 11 of this device and this is a thick line because this is a tagged port. So this port is linked to BRR, BMR1. I can see that guy right here so then when I come back it takes me all the way up to the next switch and then it goes up and carries on. So if we follow this up we get to the next switch and it goes over and this is where it gets interesting and we come along to the last switch which actually is our first switch this is the master uh, ring protection switch so when we look at the last port here we see it is blocked by ring protection eaps and that's why it's a dashed line and later on when i come to my live lab here i'll show you uh, how it can go from a dash line to a solid line when you get a break. So the other thing I did is, of course, I added a background image. So that's this guy right here. You can open up PNGs, JPEGs, or BMP files. And then, and I can set the opacity. So if I made it 100%, it would actually be very uh, vibrant in the front, or I could set it down to 20% and it will be muted in the background. So when you're uh, happy with the layout and you've got it all locked down, what you might want to do is go to the file menu and select print. Uh, and then you can choose from one of these sizes uh, and it's always going to fit. So you choose portrait or landscape and the size of paper that you want to print on and it will make a PDF. So now I've actually plugged into my network so I can give you a live demonstration of what this looks like in real time uh, with some of the gear that I have behind me here. So a quick little tour of my office. This is my desk. Uh, over here is a, a demo kit which I have a N-Lite snapshot in, the rack in the back, and uh, the rail that has a whole bunch of gear on it. So uh, let's just zoom in here uh, to the rack. And uh, what I'm interested in showing right here is, just move this off to the side, the redundant link in my Ring Protect network. So if I uh, take one of these primary links here, which is doing all the transfer, and I disable that, what you can actually see is immediately the line goes dashed red and the one that was dash blue has gone solid and my via rack is now flashing at me saying we have a broken link here now if i reverse this and let it come back up there it heals pretty darn fast you can see that uh and now the traffic is flowing along this fat link and this dash link is the backup so 
uh, that's one uh, live feature. The other one I can show you, I have this e-link here right in front of me. Uh, and I can go to this port on the VIA. I can right click and I can say power cycle my e-link. And as you can see, it has gone down. I got a dash line saying that it is offline. Uh, and in a second, it will boot back up and we get the salt line again and the online indicator. Let's just filter by path ports. And let's look at my two port wall mount here, port one. And when I go here, it zooms in directly on this port one. And on this guy, I could actually view the DMX on this port in real time. And I can also uh, do an RDM discover. And then when I go back here, I can see all of the children, the RDM devices that it found. And then you could select one of those and change its start address or its personality or whatever else you would do with RDM. The other thing that we like in the right click menus is when you just select a device, you can uh, identify the device or unidentify it. And this one's really handy. You can ping the device. It automatically puts the IP address of the device in there. And then when you ping it, you can see the statistics of uh, whether or not it's there. So this is successful. Very nice. Um, you can also do a soft reboot. So if I reboot this device here, say yes, it takes the device offline. You can see the device goes down for a second. You get the red line, comes back up, it will boot and then immediately it comes back online. And you can see that down here in the message viewer. I also want to show you what we have done with internet group management protocol. So if I go to the VLAN config tab and I open up my VLAN called shock and I select one of the vias, we decided it was really bad to have querying on and not snooping on. So now you can choose snooping and querying or just snooping. If I look at my desk via, it is the querier for my system. Uh, it has an IP address of .92. Its current IGMP querier is itself on 92. And if I go look at some of the other vias in here, it this case via is also pointing to my desk via 92 and it found the querier on port seven. And if you went back to the device tab and looked at port seven, and then looked at that navigator, that indeed is the port that goes off to the desk via, which is the querier. So it's a good idea to actually just flip through everybody on a VLAN and see uh, that they are all pointing at the same querier. There should only ever be one active on the network at once. The desk via 24 is the main one. And my house via, which is uh, a higher IP address, is the backup one. So if I delete, if I rebooted the desk via, then everybody would revert to the house via as the querier. One of the other nice features that we've added is this IGMP membership list. Let's do a real-time demonstration of how these IGMP membership tables change. So let's go to the navigator. Let's find a via that is driving, uh, let's say this CDMX. So it is listening to universe five and universe one. So if I look at the rail via eight port seven. Let's go into the VLAN config tab, find the rail via eight and port seven is currently forwarding universe one and universe five and some pathway data and config data and other path ports. So we don't see in here uh, anything above universe eight. So if I go to this port and I say let's put you onto universe 
let's say 22. And we send that off. Now this guy is listening to port five and port 22. If we go look at port seven of this via in the VLAN config, rail via eight, and we look at port seven, we now see that it has dropped universe one and it has picked up universe 22 forwarding multicast data from streaming ACN universe 22. This is very useful information for anybody that is using multicast protocols like streaming ACN or Dante. And one of the other enhancements that comes out with this release of Passcape is the ability for eLink to transmit not just ArtNet, ShowNet, streaming ACN, Pathway SSACN, but it can also now transmit the Color Kinetics KiNet protocol. So, and then when you go to a single path of eLink, you can say that your DMX data path uh, is going to transmit to a KiNet power supply port six, or it can transmit unicast to uh, a specific IP address on a KiNet power supply unit. So, uh, again, 16 different paths. You can go out to 16 different unicasts or broadcasts of the KiNet protocol. So these are some of the enhancements we have made to Passcape, which we now call Passcape Config, foreshadowing some of the exciting things that are to come at Pathway Connectivity. So download it from our website now and uh, do let us know how you find the Network Navigator working in real time to give you a whole different view of what your network looks like. Until next time, I'm Rob from Pathway Connectivity Solutions. Take care.